Here at Modernist Pantry, we really love working with emulsifiers. And one of the best emulsifiers out there is a lecithin. So today on WTF, we're going to look at an organic sunflower lecithin and how to make an amazing cornbread with it. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF, every week we cover unique ingredients, techniques, do some cool demos. So if you like what you see here, remember to subscribe and ring the bell, and you'll get notified of our content. It comes out every single Tuesday. And this week on WTF, we're going to be covering sunflower lecithin. And we've been working with lecithins for a long time, predominantly soy lecithin, but there's been a lot of demand of people who are interested in sunflower lecithin, either you know, because they have soy allergies or want just a different um, type of product. So we decided to bring it in, and of course we had to do a WTF episode about it, so we can talk about like what it does, how it's different from soy, and then of course the demo on what a cool recipe is that you could possibly use with it. So Scott, let's take it away. Sure, so we're actually going to be making a cornbread today and we wanted to do like almost like a caramelized cornbread. Mm -hmm. So we, we made some caramelized corn and we wanted to you know hold on to that hydration and we didn't want it to get stale because sometimes cornbread, especially around the edge, is getting really stale. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to have a really nice cornbread that could last a long time. So we actually have a cornbread here that we made earlier this week. Uh, and we're going to show you on camera how to do it. But for the differences really, I think this is important. Uh, other than a soy allergy or something that you would want to as avoid soy, the sunflower lecithin is good because it doesn't attract as much moisture as the soy lecithin does. Okay. So whenever you have soy lecithin, sometimes if you open up the bag, you'll notice it's uh, relatively clumpy, mm -hmm. uh, but it just loves moisture so much mm -hmm. that it becomes very clumpy the second it comes in contact, even if it's just humid outside, mm -hmm. it'll start to clump up. And as we have here, we did a little test where we held them out uh, in the open, and over time, the sunflower lecithin absorbed less of that natural you know, moisture from the air mm -hmm. than the, uh, the regular soy lecithin did. So that's one bit of a benefit that you could get from using the sunflower lecithin. Yeah, and I think just to back it up a little bit, um, for folks who are not have not worked with leth lecithin before, lecithin, it's hard to say, um, can you maybe go into maybe like a 30 second explanation of what is lecithin and what is what its role is in emulsification? Yes, yeah, so emulsifier is one thing, and what it does is it, part of it loves moisture and part of it loves fat. Mm -hmm. So when you have something like that, it can grab onto both of them. And when you add it to uh, moisture or liquid or whatever you're adding it to, and you start to mix it up, it attaches to those fat particles as well and holds in that moisture. So when you have something like a bread, a cake, uh, even uh, a um, vinaigrette, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's going to keep it together for longer. So what that means for bread or cake uh, is that it's going to prevent that staling. So mm -hmm. that moisture kind of can't get out of there. It can't escape because it's encapsulated in that fat. Mm -hmm. So if you have that, you know, that a nice emulsification, then you're going to have less staling and things like that. And one thing we have here is cinnamon buns, and we Ooh. make these cinnamon buns. And cinnamon buns are notorious. We did an entire episode on it with soy lecithin, but you can substitute in sunflower lecithin. Mm -hmm. And with those, they're notorious for going stale, and the lecithin keeps them fresher, moister, everything longer. So that's yeah. a good thing. Good now how long How long ago did we make these? So we made these uh, actually yesterday, and even for one yeah. day of making uh, um, cinnamon buns, usually the next day they're their hockey pucks. Mm -hmm. With these, all I do is I took them in, I heat them up just gently, and you have brand new, pretty much. So yeah. that, that's a that's a good benefit of uh, the lecithin. Yeah, of course, because if you're if you're making anything, right, like the less you have to waste if you're making it for yourself or you're making it to sell, the less you have to throw away, the better you exactly. already, you already put all the time and effort in. So yeah, so do your best to keep you know your money and your your customers happy. So yeah, right. and if you do you want to check out this recipe and all of today's recipes, they are in the links in the description below on our blog, blog.modernistpantry.com. So everything you see here and more info about soy, totally available. And one thing just to note is if you do see a recipe with soy lecithin, you mm -hmm. can replace it one for one with sunflower lecithin. So mm -hmm. there's no like weird ratio, no math calculation you have to do. Mm -hmm. You just replace it one for one and Easy. it'll be good to go. Okay. So let's get into making this uh, this cornbread. At least we're going to make the batter 
we don't have to show you the baking portion <laughs> of it because it's already baked. So what we have here is just flour. Our soy less then goes right into our dry mix. We mm -hmm. have two different types. We have a really coarse cornmeal, mm -hmm. which gives it that kind of like little uh, crispy bits, you know, when we're eating our cornbread. And then we have a, um, a more like a semolina flour, so a very fine cornmeal. So we get that really corn flavor. So very simply, I'm just going to add this into my mixer. And then what we did is we took corn, we took thyme, we took butter and honey, and we cooked them all together until they become beautifully caramelized. Mm. And when they're beautifully caramelized like that, you get all the extra uh, flavor out of the corn, but a little less moisture. So this is actually a really high fat content uh, uh, cornbread mix. So I'm just gonna put this down, there we go. And I'm just gonna kind of get this going. I'm gonna gently add in my, my fat and my Corn. We want to add the thyme in there because we, you know, cornbread sometimes is very sweet. And while we do have honey and sugar in this recipe, uh, we did want to have a little bit of savoriness to kind of bring out that, you know, savory aspects of corn. And it goes with a nice um, corn bacon, or I'm sorry, a thyme bacon butter that we made mm. too. So almost simulates the corn chowder, right? So nice. very simply, uh, we have our eggs. So I'm just going to add them in one by one. Once those are mixed in, we ended up going with buttermilk. We wanted a little bit of acidity for this dough. Uh, so we wanted it to have really kind of complex, deeper flavors. You can do buttermilk, you can do kefir, you can do any uh, type of milk like this. If you want to use yogurt, you can okay. do that too. Just know if you use something, you know, like a strained yogurt, it's gonna eventually change up the, the uh, hydration of the dough. Mm -hmm. so. so just add in buttermilk. And then we wanted a shorter dough. So what we did is we added some heavy cream too, so there's even more fat within this. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's cornbread, it's, it's a bit indulgent, it goes uh, alongside healthy things like, you know, brisket or, or mm -hmm. ribs or whatnot. So I'm going to add in the heavy cream, and then with this, once I add this, I'm just going to mix it up until it's incorporated. Right. I don't want to keep it going too long because I'm creating those gluten strands, right? Okay. So every, if I keep mixing this, keep mixing this, it's going to create a, a stickier, um, less, you know, flaky kind of dough. And that's what we want. We wanted it to be a little bit uh, crumbly, you know, when we cut it out because the way we found uh, a bit too chewy, we weren't really happy with it. But if a really flaky kind of cornbread, uh, it was really amazing, which we have right here. So I'm just going to mix that up until it just comes together. And then that's our cornbread mixture here. Cool. And you can just scrape the sides gently. You don't want to go too much more than that, but you can see a really beautiful mix. If there's any like little bits and bobs that are not mixed in fully, you can just do that right before you pour it in. So mm -hmm. we pour it directly into a cast iron and then cook it off. And it's really great if you have individual cast irons, they make like almost like perfect little oh corn yeah. muffins. Oh yeah, um, So Jane, great. if you want to dig in, this should break apart. Uh, relatively easily, right? So, uh, yeah, Ooh, yeah so you look get at that. really Just nice. A nice healthy dose of that butter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's a lot of butter. Well, it, it's uh, kind of like an appetizer and a dessert at the same time. Mm. It's really good. Right, so it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a, a bit dense, but it has like all those characteristics of cornbread and a little bit of savoriness too. So we wanted to make a really kind of different take on cornbread, mm -hmm. but we, we needed that sunflower less than to hold on to that moisture because without it, it would eventually dry, especially the edges. Mm -hmm. uh, even though there is a high fat content in this, it's going to dry out a little bit. So you get those chewy kind of edges. Yeah. And with this, we get a nice, you know, uh, crispy edge. So Yeah, I like the, um, I like that it's not too sweet, first yeah. of all, but I also like that you get the whole corn kernels and also the kind of coarse corn yeah. fl flour in there. So it has a lot of texture mm -hmm. and a lot of different flavors, which I like. Yeah, and when we, when we caramelize those corn kernels, right, mm. we lose some of that moisture, so we get that really kind of intense corn flavor, and that's what we wanted. We wanted the corniest cornbread that we could <laughs> do, no pun intended. Mm. So when we, you know, when people look at it, they're like, oh, sunflower lesson, I got to try that on for my own recipe. Uh, what do you recommend for kind of a starting ratio, and how do they incorporate it into their other ingredients? So very simply, you can mix it into the dry. Okay. So that's totally fine. If you're doing a vinaigrette, you can mix it right into the water. I would start with the water. Mm -hmm. um, so you mix it into your vinegar, whatever your base is, and then you blend it with uh, your oil then. So you can, it's very simple to, to mix in in that way. Uh, for a ratio, I would go between 0.6 and 1%. You can mm -hmm. go all the way up to maybe 1.5, but at that point, you're, you're either using too much, which 
is good for emulsification, but then you're just wasting it. But mm -hmm. yeah, about 1% is a sweet spot for almost any of these recipes. Yeah, and, and one thing I do want to just point out that this particular product um, is organic, which is really cool for people who, you know, like value having an organic product to work with. Um, so I think for, if you're making something for like, you know, a bakery or some kind of like small business, uh, I think right now like having a clean label and having that yep. kind of, you know, organic cachet is pretty big, which is why we wanted to source one that, you know, is just sunflower less thin and doesn't have like a lot of other stuff in it as well. Yes, yeah, so, and going on top of, you know, no soy, so if someone, you know, wants to eat organic or wants clean label and also doesn't want soy, then perfect. Yep. This is something that you can use for them. And there's one more aspect of it that is the same as uh, soy lecithin. So if mm -hmm. I could have that a little bit sure. over. So this is just some cranberry juice. We wanted to show you that Here you, you can absolutely use this as a foaming agent. So okay. if you have a favorite foam recipe and you want to kind of ditch the soy within it, you can put in some, and I'm just going to put in uh, eyeball amount of the sunflower less than I'm just going to mix it in. So once it gets in there, this is a surfactant. What that does is it kind of coats the water. It, it, it bonds to it, like I said before. And as the air becomes incorporated, it will catch these air bubbles and it will make a nice foam. So this is a nice lacy foam that we're making here. And if I just keep going, I'll get it to a sweet spot. Where it'll, there we go. So the foam will just start being generated, and you can do this with any flavor, as long as there's no fat in this, because then it'll just start to emulsify. So if any, uh, just water-based liquid mm -hmm. be good. So you have some nice foam here. Ooh. Very simple, just to show you that you can absolutely foam with the, uh, the sunflower less than thin, just as you would the soy less than. And the ratio for that is specifically about 0.6%. Uh, uh, I made a bunch of foam, so I was able to kind of eyeball it. But right, you have a beautiful nice. foam right here yeah. that you can then lay on top of a dish, and it is nice, delicate, kind of cool presentation. It's true. And if you're not familiar with foams, we have an episode all about foaming. It's also a very popular episode. Also in the description below. So, it, so kind of like emulsifiers in general, but I think particular the lecithins are so versatile, and that's mm -hmm. kind of why they're one of my personal favorite ingredients, because you can do so much with them. Yep. You can emulsify, you can improve your baked goods, you can do like foaming, you know, so they, they, they're not like a, you know, like a very specific ingredient that you have to only target, be like, well, this is my only use with it. So it's cool. So if you don't have any, definitely check it out, add it to your pantry. Um, watch Scott make the cornbread on Instagram mm -hmm. at Modernist Pantry and leave your questions and comments in the description below or whatever below, comments below, and we'll get back to you and we love hearing from you. So anything else? I think I that's about off? it. Sounds good. So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garen. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chef's tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, We'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences.